There are so many different definitions of meditation and even more misconceptions. I have come to realize that it means something different for everyone. According to the Lexico Dictionary, it means a written or spoken discourse expressing considered thoughts on a subject. This adds to the misconception. If you meditate in silence, you might hear your inner voice or your thoughts. But this is not the only experience of meditation. My truth is that meditation is becoming aware of the bigger picture, connecting to your unstoried self, the part and places of you where you are not described by your work, your age, gender, skin color, weight, etc. The self with no labels, with no expectations or doing. Some call it your soul or your higher self or spirit. I think of it as your formless self. When I meditate all of the sections and walls that I built separating all the parts of me diminish and I get to feel and connect to myself as a whole unit instead of seeing or feeling myself as parts of a whole. What I mean by this is I embrace all aspects. I don't just welcome the joy and the happiness while denying or ignoring the grief and the sadness. I like to use metaphors when I explain things, as I feel it is the best way to effectively communicate with others in a way that they can understand better. So, to me, meditation is like going over to a friend's house for video games. You get to observe, understand, and feel without actually playing the game yourself. Your friend playing is the connection between your higher self, your soul, and your physical self. The controller sending out signals of what to do in the game is represented by your mind. The game realm is the world and the situations we face. Out of control, but we still interact with it. The ego is the representation of that life bar you see in the screen. Sometimes it is full power and other times it is running on empty. This influences the programming of how the mind perceives the situation. Think about it. Have you ever played a video game and you see that life bar flashing red? Suddenly, everything is more intense and more buttons are being pushed and everything feels rushed and more difficult as you try to be more cautious because you are afraid. There are a lot of debates about why we should kill off the ego or go through ego deaths. The ego's purpose is to keep the balance of duality. Your higher self giving you a higher perspective and the ego giving you a lower perspective. It is believed that the ego propels the wisdom of suffering and unhappiness when you try to change the world and those around you because it is trying to lead you to turn inward and unbecome the things that others have led you to believe that you are, which you are not. To love the ego as the servant and thanking its existence will aid, along with other things, to keep that life bar in the green. Our ego is of service to us. 
My truth is that our lessons and upgrades have already been determined and agreed upon by our higher selves or our souls before we entered into this human form. Just like the outline of the game world has been set up. Yet we still have free choice of how we want to level up and make it through the stages. Different choices will lead to different outcomes and even different things on the path. But essentially, we are still heading towards something predetermined by ourselves, no matter how we get there. It is not about the destination, but the lessons learned along the journey. Meditation is a natural state of being. Thus in thinking or saying you can't meditate might just be a misconception of what meditation really is. Alternatively, the process of meditation might seem too daunting and you are unsure of where or how to begin. Meditation is not always easy, but it is not supposed to be easy all the time. We have to endure and deal with our own mind in the process. And it is also required to surrender, which is very difficult for us as humans to do. The fact is, we all meditate, whether we know it or not. One example is right before you go to sleep. You move through a state of meditation before entering into a state of REM sleep. We are just not conscious about it because we don't invite our awareness back to the conscious mind afterwards. But instead we allow ourselves to drift further into the subconscious and unconscious mind. The thing is that we live from our subconscious mind 95% of the time. The conscious mind likes to think that it is in control because the conscious mind is what allows information to sink into the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is strict about this because there is a difference between the conscious and the subconscious mind. The conscious mind can tell the difference between what is real and what is not, where the subconscious mind believes in both the same way. So the conscious mind is acting like a security guard, trying to make sure that the information slipping past into the subconscious mind is valid. And this is where the programming of the mind plays a major role. The lenses through which we look at. This is why our controller, like I explained in the, my metaphor, is so important. Have you ever played a video game and tried to do something by pushing the buttons, but the controller is not responding? It is not only frustrating, but can be infuriating at times. Happened to us all. So it is important to be aligned and to bring your values, core beliefs, intentions and actions into alignment with your blueprint. I go into the subject more in another course. There are a lot of different ways to meditate. I see it as using different methods of transportation to get to the same place. Just to name a few. Guided meditation, the most common form everyone tries. Breathing meditation, walking, vipassana, yoga nidra, body scan, muscle tension release, reverse thinking, candle gazing, music, visionary meditation, transcendental meditation, mindfulness, and journaling. This list can go on forever. And these are just a few, but there is a way for everyone to connect to what suits them.